Question number 14, which is a time waster. Which one of the following could be two of the toys included in the display? Now, bad way through a question like this is try A, try B, try C, do all of that. Or you can actually notice something that's kind of cool, at least to those of us dorky enough to enjoy the LSAT, about this question. Now, they're asking for two toys that could be included. And you'll note that we have five, but here's our five. We got our two Mav, and we have our red Stegosaur, and then these two I'm going to call the Others because we don't know exactly as much about those as we do about our first three. Now, glance into the answer choices with me just for a second. If you actually visualize these answer choices, if an answer choice gives you dinosaurs that aren't mauve and that aren't the red stegosaur, then essentially what they're asking you is, could these two take up our last two spot? Could these be the others over here? Well, if you look down, answer choices B, C, D, and E, all talk about dinosaurs that aren't mauve and that aren't the stegosaur. So all of those are giving you options for these last two spots. In other words, could these fill the last two spots? Well, we don't know that much about the last two spots, but here's one thing that we do know. You gotta have either P or I. And the reason is, if you don't have P or I, then P or I would be forced into the out group, and then of course U and V would have to be together, and U and V don't like each other. Now, it is no coincidence that if you look B, C, D, and E, they do not give you either P or I. So indirectly, all of those answer choices are just forcing P and I into your out group, and that just isn't allowed. Now, one of these is not like the others because up in answer choice A, they give me green Lambiosaur and a mauve Velociraptor. And really the key word there is the mauve again, because now we're not talking about the two others. Rather, we're actually talking about one of our mauve dinosaurs. And if you visualize right up here in scenario one, we could easily have green Lambiosaur and the mauve Velociraptor, and that would work just fine. So we go with answer choice A. Question number 15, and this is scenarios to the rescue again. If the display includes a yellow Tyrannosaur, not the color I would choose for a Tyrannosaur, but we'll let it fly, then which one of the following must be true? So let's check real quick. Here we have a Tyrannosaur, but it's mauve. Here we have a Tyrannosaur, but it's mauve again, which means if we want to make a Tyrannosaur that's yellow, we're going to be working with scenario three again down here. So I could do that here. I could throw in a Tyrannosaur. I can even make it yellow, which sounds like a plan. Now that actually doesn't lead to any further deductions, but we've already done all of our work. We still have P or I to choose from, but it could be either one filling that last spot. But luckily we did all the work, so we're looking for a must be true. It's just going to be one of the things that we already know about this situation. And if you roll all the way down to answer choice E, it says the display includes a mob Velociraptor. It sure does. Question number 16. Here we go again. If the display includes both an Iguanosaur and an Ultrasaur, how exciting then the display also must include which one of the following. Now looking at up here real quick, you'll see that again, figuring out which scenario we're talking about, not too bad, because Ultrasaur's out here and out here, so the only situation we can even think about, including the Ultrasaur, is number two. So now we know we have to be dealing with number two. So now we can plug in Ultrasaur and the Iguanosaur right here. Now we know Iguanosaur always has to be green, so we can do that. And then we hit a bit of a stumbling block because you know that we have to have an ultrasaur, but ultrasaur is an option for our mob dinosaur over here, but also that could be the L and you could take up that last spot. So there's a little bit of uncertainty, even in terms of what color the ultrasaur would be. Now, normally in that situation, you might freak out, hit the wall, but actually, if you think about it, that's good because this question isn't asking you about what could be true. Rather, this question is asking you about what must be included in the display. So screw figuring out all the different possibilities that could exist. We just need something that must be true and we're already there. The one thing that we know for sure, in addition to this, is that we have this mauve tyrannosaur in scenario number two. And if you look at answer choice A, it says the display includes a mauve tyrannosaur. So that's definitely going to be our guy.
Wrapping things up here with question number 17. Again, it can be a little bit tough, but make things easy on yourself. This says if the display includes two green toys, then which one of the following could be true? So now we have to visualize we have two green toys. Now remember, on a previous question, I talked about this distinction between our mob and our stegosaur versus the others. Well, now what they're doing by telling us that we have two green toys is filling up the others. Tricky part is this. It sure looks like that could happen in any of our scenarios, and we don't want to waste the time to go through and plug in green into all of them. So let's just think about it in a more general sense first. If these two spots are green, well, let's talk about what that means. And looking over here, there's a few things you can notice. The first thing is, if I have a platysaur, it's got to be yellow. Well, now in these situations, since I filled up my last two spots with greens, I just don't have any yellow. There is no yellow, which means now P would have to be out. Take up one of my spots that's out. Now, we did talk about the deduction earlier that I have to have either P or I in the display because otherwise U and V would have to be together. So if P's out, then I know that I is going to have to be one of these green dinosaurs. But the other one still is a little bit up in the air. Now, you might be tempted to go further on this question, but actually, if you look through the answer choices, this is already enough to get us there because answer choice A says there's exactly one yellow dinosaur, but we just talked about there's no yellow that makes the cut in this situation. And then each of C, D, and E are all knocked out just by the deduction that P's got to be out because answer choice C tells you that L and V are both out, but no, because we only got one spot left in my out group. D says that T and V are both out, but same idea. There's not room for both of them. And E says that U and V are both out. And this is getting a little repetitive. That still doesn't work because P is out. So really just getting the deduction first that you don't have any yellow and second that P's out gets you through all the wrong answer choices. The right one here is going to be answer choice B, which says that you have a green Tyrannosaur and this other green one is totally up in the air and it is cool for it to be the Tyrannosaur. Even though we have two situations where the Tyrannosaur has to be mauve, down here we definitely have room for a green one. So my answer is B. Well, folks, that was the infamous Mav Dinosaurs. My apologies if you got destroyed by that game, if it made your LSAT day less than enjoyable. We all hate that. But big lessons to take out of this. First, weird setup, but really it's just combining two things that you've done on your own independently, putting them together, so don't let that freak you out. And also, always spend a little bit of extra time looking for those deductions. Here, if you spend an extra 30 seconds just really looking into the mob, what can be mob, what can't be mob, because you know you got those two spots to fill, you can see how that deduction gets you through these questions quickly and accurately, and of course, that's the goal.